This year I started doing these recap videos. Hopefully they're easier to digest than a big stream, but they hold a lot of the same content and make it easier for somebody to decide, do you want to commit time to watch a two hour stream or not? This is the second recap video for the series of streams on the garage door opener that I was looking at in January. Unfortunately, the video for that stream got delayed by quite a bit. It's a little complicated, but the short explanation is my streams used to auto-publish as soon as they were over. I've changed it so they don't, and I forgot to publish it, so my bad. Anyway, between the first stream, when we looked at some of the initial attack servers, read the manuals, and looked at the Android app, and the second stream, I ended up going in and I configured the device. I hooked it up. I went through the standard configuration installation manual, I got it turned on, and I got it hooked up to the web. And the reason for that is because it made it available to me on stream. It's now part of my network, I can talk to it, and in particular, I could talk to the web interface. When we started the stream, that's all I had. I could connect to the web interface, and I could access some of the pages. But what jumped out immediately was that none of the pages were active. They were all static HTML with nothing really available in them that indicated that there was any server-side processing going on. With that done, we ran Nmap, hoping to turn up something new. Maybe there's another service listening on another port or anything to start with. But again, nothing happens. It's just a plain web server serving static pages. After this, we decided to turn to one of the Durbuster style tools. These are tools that kind of brute force a web server to try and determine if there are any pages listed, since we can't just guess what pages might be there. It uses a brute force dictionary, it goes through all of them. In particular, the version we used was GoBuster, which was written by OJ Reeves, another security streamer. We ran through this and it actually turned up quite a few new pages. Some of them actually had some interesting data on them, such as MAC addresses and SSIDs and things like that, but we still didn't have any active pages. All of them were static pages, and it appeared to be zero active server-side processing going on. Because of that, I kind of decided that this was going to be the end of these streams. If there's no server-side processing going on in the web interface, and there's no other interfaces to talk to, we kind of have to call it a day. I'm not going to be able to find those code execution bugs I was hoping to find. With that said, the comments mentioned that they found, just glancing through what I had on stream, at least one example of being able to attack the browser. Now that's an interesting attack, but this interface isn't really used much. I only had to use it very briefly to set it up once, and as far as I can tell, I'd never use it again in normal operation. It's also not code execution on the device, which is really what I was hoping to find. In addition, there was this Marvel sock bug that uh, I didn't look into it a ton, but it looks like if you have a specific SSID when it does a scan, you can potentially get memory corruption and go from there to full code execution on the device. With that said, I'm not doing that on stream. It's going to be very difficult to land because I'm going to need to hook up a debugger to land a memory corruption bug, and honestly, I'm not unhooking my garage door just to stream that. But more importantly, that's a very dangerous bug. From what I've read about it, it looks like this sock is on all sorts of devices, and I don't really want a public proof of concept exploit for it just floating around out there. So because of all that, this is pretty much just going to be a two-part stream. We took a look at the device. It was interesting, but without physically pressing a button on the device, it doesn't look like it does any sort of server-side processing which, to be honest, is pretty much what we'd like to see in these devices. As far as an IoT device goes, I'd rather have it do nothing without physical access than have it do everything and have that everything include DDoSing the internet. So we're now starting on our next stream topic. It actually kicked off this week, and we're looking at one of the pwn-to-own targets, VirtualBox. We're going through a whole bunch of the initial work to determine what exploitable bugs in the target look like. And then we're going to go through and potentially land a couple of these to try and get a feel for how you would exploit them. So if that sounds interesting to you, please tune in on the future streams, and I should hopefully have a recap video for the first of those up soon. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye! <laughs>